Hello, everybody. This is you, Sai. Welcome back to this week's edition of Let's Talk. My guest today is celebrity photographer Brian Bowen Smith, who I consider as an amazing colleague who has been inspiring me over the last 15 years. I've watched Whoa. his world grow. Oh, yes. And don't, don't interrupt me when I'm giving you an intro. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's how he is. <laughs> but I've been seriously watching his work for the last 15 years and watching him grow as a photographer. In fact, he doesn't even know I was in the audience watching giving a speech at Edinburgh. That was years ago. And from there forward, I knew he has something amazing to tell and story to share. And exactly what he's doing this week. He's putting a book out. I'm going to talk about, about that book. But before we do, let's welcome Brian Bowen Smith. And we're going to share a little bit about how he became a photographer today. Hey, Brian. Hello, Yutsai. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah. you for being with me today. I'm so glad that you're not driving around because I've been following you on Instagram. You've been in a car and live. And it's just a lot of stuff going yeah. on. Yeah. So are you grounded now? Are you grounded for a while? I am, I am grounded for a while now. I am chilling out with my family at home and, you know, lots of post work and just, you know, kind of going through and keeping busy and creating shoots when I can, just like everyone else. And we're all in the same boat in this, so it's kind of weird and satisfying, wow. knowing, you know, knowing that it's not. I mean, if you lost your job just because you suck, that's terrible. But, you know, the fact that, you know, we just have to wait this out and we're all doing the right thing is, is just what has to be done. So I consider that my job right now. And I'm so glad you said that because during this time, everybody's pivoting, trying to figure out what they're worth um, in this world, right? People yeah. who work on the front line, thank you guys so much for being out there, always helping us with the nurses and the doctors and, and the food providers and the farmers. Those guys are doing everything as if nothing is happening around us because they're there to provide for us. However, for Absolutely. us in the creative field, that we really have to make a decision and choice is how do we move forward? How do we stay creative through this time? And both of us work for magazines and, and entertainment industry where there's no entertainment happening, new content created. Our work kind of come to a stop. But yeah. that did not stop you, because not your style. You. <laughs> or you. Well, Brian, I know that, that we're going to jump into this book that you've been creating. It's so phenomenal. And I've been watching you on different TV channels promoting this book. And we're here today to celebrate that book. But before we do that, I think it's important for the viewers to know that that little bit of journey of how you became the photographer that you are today. So take us back to when was the first time you decided, I'm going to pick up that camera and start taking pictures? Well, to, if I'm being honest, the first time I decided I really wanted to be a photographer and I loved it was when I was in high school, ninth grade. I took a, uh, a photography class and that's the only class to date, even through college, that I've ever received an A. You know, I've got super, I've got severe ADD, I've got you know, attention is like paying attention and concentrating for me is, is kind of super hard. So school wasn't easy. Um, I fell in love with the camera and, and I fell in love with how people looked at me in the class, especially my teacher, who I don't think was expecting me to hand in assignments. And when I handed them in, he was like, whoa, like, these are really good photographs. Like, this is incredible. And, you know, being in the darkroom and stuff like that was like, such a treat because I was kind of an inner city kid. We didn't have, we didn't have, you know, money to buy cameras and all that stuff. So at school was the only chance I could do it. Unfortunately, after that class was over, that ended my access to cameras or to dark rooms or to anything like that. So it, I kind of fell off of it until about 20, maybe 25 years ago um, when I had moved out to Los Angeles. I met the legendary photographer Herb Ritz. Um, through, I met him at a party with my manager, Sandy Gallen, and was just in awe. Like, I knew who he was. I still followed, especially living in New York and, 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 and you know, being in the industry, I, fo I follow coffee table books. And I've always been a huge fan of, uh, of Herb's videos, books, like everything. And so to meet him, I was kind of starstruck and like, wow. And, talking his ear off at a party. He's probably like, okay, cool, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna get some shrimp now. <laughs> um, 
And so we became some, you know, became some a little bit of a friend. But then he hired me as a um, as a model, as an athlete um, at the time, um, to be in a Gap campaign. And so this was the first time I've seen like a whole shoot go down, and I was flabbergasted, like, wow. This, I, this is like a movie set. I mean, there were 18Ks everywhere. There were tons of people walking around, people bumping into you like, oh, excuse me, get out of the way. Okay, this, this, that, you know, I'm like, this is like, this is not like a photo shoot that I imagined and I didn't realize the production and, and how much went into it. And then after the shoot, he was sitting in the back and I just went to say goodbye to him. And he was had his Africa book laid out mm. and he was going through it with some people like, sit down, sit down, tell me what you like. I'm like, oh, no, 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 I, don't. I couldn't, you know, but oh, God, look at that giraffe. That's amazing. And so he's like, oh, good, keep the giraffe. And I'm like, no, no, wait. You know, like, <laughs> it's just like, you know, he was that kind of guy that was just so, he was so cool. And he was so nice. And, and, and he was so confident in what he did. And I think from that day when I left there, I was like, man. You know, everyone told me you're too, it's too late. I've been trying my luck at acting and, and doing small things, you know, just doing whatever you could to stay alive in this town. And I was having a ball, you know, skating. I, my life was like the California dream. And I, my rent was $850 and that's in a block from the beach in Venice. Like, I'm like, the world couldn't be better for me right now. And then um, I got a camera and it was a wrap and I just said, this is, you know, when you know the feeling when you get a camera in your hand and, and you bought it and it's yours now. And now I, there's no YouTube to look up how to use it. There's no, you know, so it was a lot of trial and error and taking notes in a notebook of what you did with each frame. So then when you develop the frame, film, you could go back to each frame and say, oh, well, I screwed that up. It's completely blurry. Then why is it blurry? I was in focus. Oh, it's shutter speed from what I'm reading. And so there was a lot of just me going into this zone of self-talk. But when I decide to do something, it kind of takes over my whole being. And I don't, I, I, I take rejection really well. Like I'm not afraid to fail. That's not the point. I, I'm just, I don't like not knowing something that I'm interested in. So, and they're not, many things in this world that that catch me and captivate me like that so when i find it i latch on to it and so i latched on photography like a a, a freaking a leech onto a bloody neck i'm like i i you know and i tell everyone i'm like i'm gonna do this and my, i was so excited every time i had a camera so and and a lot of people were hating dude you can't just pick up a camera and be a photographer and <laughs> i don't care who your friends are i've been doing this for 15 years and it's tough and it's more than just, and I'm like, well, I'm, I'm ready to do the work. And it sounds like you've given up, not me. Like, I just don't have that attitude. And I would sit and talk like, you know, if I met someone that was interested, I'm like, oh, oh, photography. And I could, I would talk to a homeless man for three hours if he, you know, if he wanted to talk about it. I just really, you know, some people say they love photography. I absolutely I'm still passionately in love with it. You're and obsessed with it. And, and, you I, and let me tell you, I was 30, maybe 34. I was really, it wasn't a young, you know what I mean? Like this thing just grabbed a hold of me later in life. It's almost like you get divorced and you're like, I'm never going to meet anyone again. I am, well, uh, then all of a sudden, you know, Shay walks in. Right. And you're like, what in the world? Why do you like me? Well, incredibly blessed because Herb Prince is one of the iconic, most iconic photographers of, of our time. And and I had the opportunity to meet him as well. And, and on, the, on the same same note that he's one of the, he's the antithesis of what we thought fashion photographer would be because he was so kind and incredibly awkwardly quiet at time as well. Yeah, he, I can see you two getting along so good. So I worked with him on a different level. I never assisted him. I was a post-production supervisor on several music videos. So yeah. he he would come into the editing room with the editor and I would just sit in the back quietly watching them work. It's just like, I'm gonna date myself, Tracy Chapman video. So if you guys wanna go back in the calendar, you can figure yes. out who I am. But it yes. was back you in the day. And, <laughs> but it was definitely, you know, back then I was actually in, in the zone of directing TV commercials, working on post-production and special effects. Photography wasn't in, in my, in my atmosphere. 
But when I met her Brits, and I, of course, as a gay man, his book, an iconic book that really celebrate erotic gay photography in the most beautiful way, that's fine art, that I knew of him and I knew his work and, and how much impact he had on the advertising industry at that time. So, so I can completely understand how you can meet someone like him and yeah. change, and, your, and, and, and you change you. A, yeah, you brought up a very important point too that I noticed with myself, and, and I'm not a gay man, but I appreciate it. And I've always respected it. My mother was gay. I was raised by um, a gay man. So I never had, I never knew the difference. Like, so, so what you like, you like what you like. Isn't that just fine? Like that's how the world, how I grew up saw it. I, I realized later that was not the case. And what I loved about Herb and what you just said that reminded me is that when I did look at his photos, all you see is beauty. That's it. And a man for a man that's like, you know, because my dumb, you know, college bull nose, you know, beefcake friends that thought they were so cool. Well, what were you looking at that book for, dude? Well, uh, you know, like, you know, it's beautiful. And I think that he was single handedly responsible for bringing beauty to the gay community and, and cultures, and which is so important because, you know, if you, if you look at life, like just, I, I look at like love is beautiful. It doesn't matter what shape, color, anything. Love is just beautiful. So I love that he put that into the world, but he did it in such a smart, intelligent way, in his way, because that's the way he saw it. Well, Ma Maple Maplethorpe, just as important, saw it in a different way. In a completely Very different way. In your face, everybody kind of had their voice, and and I, I agree, because what Herb was doing was something that a lot of photographers at the time were not doing, which is celebrating what his true passion was in erotic photography yes. in the most beautiful way, but at the same time still showing up, shooting Julia Robert in a t-shirt yeah. of a men's t-shirt laughing. That's something I'm sure when you started shooting, people were like, what kind of photographer are you? Are you this category or this category? Because in our industry, we get pigeonholed really quickly. They want to know that whether you are a commercial photographer, fashion photographer, yeah. celebrity photographer. Yeah. And because of her breads, I actually was able to say, I can be all of that. Right, we can be all of that because not many photographers adopt all those energy into one, and he really exemplified that. Now you had an opportunity to work with him on set as well. Oh yeah, and that's where you know I re and that's a great point. And I I actually don't like that. You know what stuff type do you do this? I'm like a photographer should be able to do anything. If you're a good photographer, you should explore and do all different kinds: fashion, celebrity, portraiture. But you I know, think we can. I you think can. I think as, as an artist, we all want to. I think it has to do with the editors and with the, yes. with the system that everybody wants you to be a certain way. Now, I can see that in the last three, four years, it has begun to change. Versatility yeah. really becomes helpful as somebody that you embrace. If you can direct like you, can also be in front of camera like you, and be behind the camera all in one, you're triple threat. And you yes. actually work more. And that's something that I have to say in the very beginning of my career, I would hide just behind that camera and go, okay, don't let other people know my other talent. Don't let them know I worked in advertising as a creative director, one of the renowned advertising agencies in New York, because that's not what they want to know. They just want to know that I'm a photographer, I'm here to execute their idea, and you kill your little hand, your little bow, namaste, and you go away and go home, hopefully get hired again. But yeah. I'm glad the world has evolved and changed, because you are one of those photographers really held on to that wave that be able to be triple thread. I seen you on TV and we both work with Heidi Klum. So we both mm -hmm. need to exercise a little bit of drama on television yeah. together on Germany's <laughs> top model. It's always fun to be there. And, yeah. and, and then over the years, what I love about you, Brian, the most is that you come with this genuine quality about you. And one thing, I, it sounds really funny to say, but I'll say this. I love seeing a straight photographer conquering what gay photographer has easily come to them in this industry. Yeah. It sounds funny for people uh, out there don't know is that predominantly photographer in fashion are gay. It just happened to be, it's a clique, it's a, it's a group of people that uh, most of them are. And when you came out with the ring, I was like, wow, he's killing it and he's killing it and he's straight. What's that all about, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, mm. I was like, what is that? <laughs> he must be really good. And then, then we begin to see that you start harnessing Herbert's talent that he has 
photograph and you develop this amazing relationship with all of them. I think that's something that other photographers out there, especially the Gen Zs right now, need to know that it's not just about clicking that picture. It is truly mm, about yes. the relationship that you have developed over time with them. Because I have personally worked with same talent that you have worked with. And, and I laugh about this now. I just had the opportunity to work with Hilary Swank. And mm. on set, she couldn't stop talking about you so much. I'm like, <laughs> Should I leave? Well, it goes both ways, my friends. <laughs> you, have, just... but I, you know what I will tell you, and, and, and you're exactly right. And like you said, if it's if it's by advice for um, younger photographers, and it's and, and let me ask you this: is is this happened with you as well? I think because of who we are as people and how we grew up that way, we're not pretending to be someone else or put it on when the shoot's on. If you and I are at a party, which we've been, we're, we're the same people, we're crazy loud, and we just don't give a, you know, uh, we don't care what if people think, if they think we're corny or we're obnoxious, and like, we're never mean, and we're always ourselves, and we're not afraid to do that. And I think that other people find that infectious because some of them, and, and you know, a lot of the celebrities can't. You know, sometimes they can't just put on and be who they are. They're afraid they're going to get judged. And they get judged way out. No, I ain't going to be on TMZ where they're like, oh, did you see Brian's beach bod? You know, they're <laughs> like, they don't give a shit. You know what I mean? But celebrities, they go out and they can't be themselves. And then if they do get bend over and they get a bad picture, people blow it up. And it's scary. But I've noticed that some people I see that, you know, they're like, they, they put on an act and think that they're going to win people over. But I think that the most important thing you can do as a photographer, like you said, being talent, I know so many talented photographers that aren't going to do anything or aren't doing anything. And they're sitting around mad and, and hating and saying, well, I don't understand why Brian got there act like an idiot and shoot a basic picture that I could do in my sleep. And he's getting all this job. And I'm like, it, they forget that we've been doing this for a long time and we've been putting in and making bridges and, we, we gain the trust of huge companies like Paramount and you with Bazaar and Invoke. Like they, it's not that they don't want to give new people a chance. They do. I was that new guy at one point. You were. But if you're investing, you know, $100,000 in a shoot, they're going to get what they want and they want to know that they're getting it. So it does take time. And if you, I had to have very thick skin in this industry because it does not come cheap. Even to get my agent. It took me three years, and they said, come back in a year. And I'm like, come back in a year when I'm homeless? Like, what do you mean, come back in a year? Like, I'm ready. And they're like, you're not ready. And I couldn't understand it for the longest time. Like, I am ready. Look at these. Look at my picture. They're like, no, you've got a couple good pictures. But we need them all to be like this because then, like you said, there's fashion agents, there's entertainment agents, there's food agents travel and le leisure. So there's, there's also trying to figure out what is it you want to do? I oh, knew absolutely. early that I wanted to be just like her. I, I, I wanted to be exactly like him, except try to find my version in art that was different. Because I could have very easily went and shot everything very clean and crisp and white t-shirt jeans, build a white flat, use some HMIs and do exactly what Herb did. But what it, that, that wouldn't have done anything for me. It wouldn't have made me special. And I wanted to experiment. And another thing that I did was I tried everyone's technique. I learned everything so I knew what not to do. And then the, 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 I guess the style, if you will, if, even if I, I don't even know if I've pretty much got one. I think that I'm more like you where it's like, I just want everyone to look beautiful and feel the best that they, they've ever felt. And well, I definitely... Where, I can recognize a BBS photo when I see it. Yeah. There's, there's, there, I, I absolutely do. And I think that, that happens with, with photographers as artists. Uh, no matter what technique, you can pick, pick up a oil brush or acrylic or watercolor. There's always going to be those contour lines, the treasury lines that, that, yeah. that really identify your work. And you have this work that has a signature of your work. And, I, and they're always powerful. They're always empowering of the talent. And you can tell through your work that you have a relationship with them. And that's yeah. what's so special about 
about, I will say the LA water. I'm gonna just give LA a little nod here because you know, there's a whole stigma about being a New York photographer, fashion right. and all that. You know what, New York water tastes great, but there's something about it that makes you guys want to hate people sometimes. I don't know yeah. why you have to hate what, we, so so I, you know, I went to New York, paid my dues, shop fashion, and I brought that energy back to LA. And I got into the industry, I think maybe it was a year before you or two years, we, come, we came up around the same time. Mm -hmm. But I too was very strategic like you. I wanted to make sure that the celebrities and people I work with know that I had the education of a fashion photographer. I'm gonna bring that fashion sexiness to the work that yeah. I'm gonna do in Los Angeles Smart. where everybody thinks that you cannot do, right? People are like, you cannot make it in Los Angeles, it doesn't happen. I'm all, have you heard of Herb Ritz? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so I think that's our kinder spirit that we both have this wonderful man come into our life um, and, and really, gave us this the spirit to pivot to find ourselves, right? And we're still trying to define who we are as we work. You should always. You know? And you you and I both are very similar. I love watching your NSI stuff and I love that you put a little behind the scenes videos because I'm like, well first of all, you are one of my favorite SR photographers by far because of how much fun you have with them and what you get out of them. And and I see the model come up to the screen and you know like you know, because if they're going to be on Sports Illustrated, they want to look their best. This is their time to shine. And it is not, it's a once in a lifetime amazing opportunity. And I think that what you do and how you were saying about me, I, 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 I've noticed and learned from you as well um, that that is so important that you have that true relationship that you're really, I think we're just trying to impress them so much, no matter who it is. And I think, but that's my job. My job is not to kiss up to people. My job is not to brown those people because they know if you're full of shit because they're gonna look at the picture and go, yeah, that's not a great photo, dude. You're funny. I had a great time, but I don't like this photo. And that's the worst, you know, I'd rather you come in, hey, what do we gotta do? Let's get to it. I've gotta be on air at three. Don't mean to be a dick. I just wanna get this done. No but problem. we have those clients. Absolutely yes. have so, those You know, clients. I'm like, you talk to The Rock or Will Smith and I'm like, you know, oh, you got something else to do dopamine. He's like, yeah, I've got six interviews. I got to finish the last part of the movie and I got to try to get home for dinner with my family. Oh, all today. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> let's get this, let's get this done. And that's another thing that I've learned to adapt. To, like when we shoot our fashion stuff, we take our time and we're creating this picture. You know, you've been in the movie side of that where they're like, no, 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 we need six shots. You've got about 10 minutes. Um, we really just, you know, and you're like, okay, no messing around. There's not, we don't have time to change things. Looks good. We did the test. Do it. Boom. Move on. Do it. Boom. Move on. And it's That's almost it. like when I walk away from those, I'm like, oh, my assistants will tell you the, the, the number one thing I say to them all the time. Do you think we got it? We got it. Right? You think we got it? And they're just like, <laughs> all the same time. Yes, you got it. <laughs> you know, because we're can, prepared now. When, I, when we're younger and we weren't prepared, we, we, we got nervous and it's still good to get nervous. It's I, like people have such a, people have such a persona about my life and what it must be like. And like you're best friends with these. And I'm like, I'm not best friends with these guys. We become, you know, they know who I am and I do them a good service. So they remember it. You know what I mean? But I'm not like outside by the pool, like, hey DJ, hand me another one of those uh, tequila <laughs> drinks, would you? Thanks, Bob. You know? Well, I always thought that, I always thought that you're alive. I always thought that everybody comes over at your house, you're making a big meal and everybody's well, just that chilling does, at your that house. Does happen. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is that spirit about you, it is that energy. And I think, you know, I wanted you to be on this show so people can see the, the, the photographer behind the lens. It's so, just as important a photographer in front of the lens. What people don't get to see is the work we have to do in front of the lens, when we're talking to them, yeah. when we're nurturing them, and when we're literally sharing whatever pain. I can tell you one of the celebrities that I was shooting one time that I won't mention her name, but you guys probably guess. We were shooting a campaign, and that day, the news dropped that she's getting a divorce. Mm -hmm. Literally dropped on the news while she was on set. I mean, it was, it was like, I'm not a photographer anymore. I'm gonna be a friend. I'm gonna be understanding. I'm gonna give her time whatever it takes for her to come back. If she chooses not to come back, then we reschedule to do another shoot. If that's yeah. okay, great. And she was such a pro, she got herself together. She goes, I just need a minute. You say, come with me, everybody leave. 
and we sit down and she's like, what do I do? How do I get through this when it's two hours that I want to fulfill my contract? And then we joke, then we laugh about things that can help us not she think like about, <laughs> right? But, but that's what we have, that's what we do in front of yeah. the same with Sports Illustrated. When girls show up, they're in a bikini. Yeah, they work out the entire month or two to get on set, but the insecurity we all have. You know what I do? I wear as small as Speedos I can find, and I don't care. And the I run around ones. like it's the red one, my signature red Speedos. All for 11 years, there's been different pairs, guys. I have grown. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> it's not the same pair. I just keep buying red ones. <laughs> but but it, to me, it's just showing them vulnerability. And I learned that when I was shooting Sports Illustrated. I think it's my second time shooting with them. I was shooting Emily Doug Tonato in Switzerland. Oh. And it was so cold. It was so cold. We were on the mountain top that we can see the Matterhorn behind her. And I can see her shivering and she was just shaking. And I stood there and all of us had like, you know, parkas on, everybody's had hat on and scarf on. I started peeling all my clothes off. I don't yeah. do my underwear. And there was like tourists everywhere. And she looked at me and goes, what are you doing? I go, I'm feeling your pain. Now we're going to celebrate the fun. And she smiled and we started shooting. And that was the moment that re I, I realized how much, how important I am, not just as a photographer, but as a friend to the person in front of me. And yeah. that that's what you do. And because of that quality, you are able to capture these amazing images for the book that you're publishing soon. So let's dive yeah. into that. Let's dive into that. So through this difficult time, all of us have been trying to find a way to pivot. As I have found, let's talk. I call it therapy section that I'm not paying the therapist, which is whoever is talking to me is giving me free therapy. So thank you very much. <laughs> At the same time that, that we begin to see artists like you, who are not going to stay reticent and just lean back and take a break. You, in fact, created a project for yourself that, that, that is so profoundly beautiful. Thank you. And I, when I saw the images, I was like, Robert Frank at work. It, it really <laughs> touched my heart well, because, but that, that. no, it's good. Sally Main, Robert Frank, we all live and strive to have that quality. And, and, and Brian, I know your work in celebrity work and I know your fine art work that you do. This was the best of best I've ever seen your work. And Thank I, you. as a colleague, I'm saying that because you were able to take a technique that everybody knows of your work. And then you remove yourself in a way that's distant in a car that you celebrate and you capture this incredible energy. So for those of you guys have not seen what I'm talking about, go onto his page, you'll see some of the behind scene videos as well. But I want you to talk about this process because it's, it's so inspiring for me as a photographer, so I know it inspires so many others out there. Yeah, you know, I had been seeing a lot of the photographers and we were all wondering the same thing. How do we stay relevant? How many pictures of my dog can I take? Or <laughs> how many pictures of my wife can I just say, babe, one more? If they're like over it, you know, even my dog rolled his eyes at me. I was like, no, dude, you don't get to do that. Sit. And so I, I was just like, and you know, and I, and it's funny is I was thinking about the Sally Mae pictures and I bought her book when she had her show at the museum. And I just was thinking to myself, what, what must have been a perfect time to be a photographer is in the mm -hmm. 60s, late 50s, like finding Vivian Meyer style. Oh. I just couldn't fathom, like, we do things so different now and they do things with film and they just really were such good artists and war photographers. And just going out and actually just going, I I'm gonna go, like, you know, I'm like, if I would have said to you before any of this went down, I'm gonna take two months off and I'm gonna travel around the country and take pictures. Nobody, especially my agent Rick and they, would have been like, no, you're not, <laughs> you know? So it was kind of the perfect time to do something. And I thought, well, what if I, I got this great Ford truck and all the windows are kind of panoramic and they, they curve around. So there's not a lot of metal, it's just all windows. And I thought that it was gonna, it, it would be a great way to shoot through and still be able to social distance from somebody. So what if I, planned a shootout, instead of just going to someone's house and shooting them on their porch, sad, and going up and shooting behind the window and, 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 and contributing to it, I'm like, what if I kind of took people's mind out of it for a minute and actually called them up, did a fitting on FaceTime, and then planned a shoot and pick a spot, safe for everyone. We both meet there at the same time and I just don't get out of the truck and I shoot you through the windows. 
So I started doing it with my neighbor down the street, Taya, and she's really just beautiful girl, getting ready to go into college, going to be a, a um, you know, a, a, a film major, and wow. she just got into UCLA. She's very happy. Then, um, you know, this happened, and I'm like, well, let's do a fitting and find a good dress. And there's you, you got, you got this great barn door and ivy. It'll look so. I'll make it look so old school to be like a, a cool shot. And but I didn't know, and I'm not tooting my own horn by any means. I didn't realize what that picture was going to do to me. And it basically, it was so much fun to create something again from the ground up, do it with challenges and have it come out good. I printed it and I stared at it and me and my wife were like, this is really cool. You should do more. So I called up another friend, did another one. And each picture had its own magic that came to life. And it was so... And when I did like five of them, I was like, I got to do this. So I was on a Like Alive um, for my other series that I did with Dancing with Your Angels with this monochrome camera that only shoots black and white. And that kind of takes all the thinking about, is this one going to be color? Is this one going to be black and white? This, I'm like, no, I'm seeing the world right now in, in two things, black and white. And so it was a perfect camera to take on the road, very small, so it was easy to have. Um, and I just said, what if I hit the road and went across the whole country from here to New York City? And what? Well, you're not going to do that. My wife's like, you'll ne you can't be gone for a week. There's no <laughs> way you're going, you know? And so I kind of like, again, when someone tells me I can't do something, I just, without thinking, called up my friend Sylvan because he owned this big RV that he bought, 1995 Skippy Bounder. It's, it's, it's old, and, but this thing was a, it was a beast. And it, and it got us, so we could quarantine in there. So we didn't have to rely on hotels. We could, we could be just with us and never have interaction with anyone else. So it was actually social distancing safe. Mm -hmm. And so I wondered, how is this gonna happen? So within two days, I'm like, we gotta go like now. And then at, at the last minute, I called my friend Evan B. Stone, who's a documentary filmmaker and he works on Destination Unknown. And, he had been working and I'm like, dude, get in the car with us, film this and let's make a documentary because I want people to see what I'm doing. I want to inspire other photographers and other people to, to, to it's a very simple concept. You know what I mean? That, that, uh, it came to me almost in a dream. You know what I mean? But when, when I took advantage of it and I saw it through is when the real magic happened. And that's what those old school photographers did is they, they did missions. Like they're, some went to Vietnam in two tours. Some went, uh, you know, from here to Europe. Some go just to crazy, the, you know, in the middle of the, the, the um, Amazon and, and study tribes and in Africa during the worst, part, worst times, risking their life. And, and it, it, it reminded me of something my old manager and dear friend Sandy Gallant told me. I was all excited when I met Herb and it was thanks to him and I was sitting in his living room and I'm like, I can't wait, dude, I'm gonna be a famous photographer one day. I promise you, I'm not gonna let you down. And I'm gonna just work so hard. And then he goes, no, 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 no. He goes, I don't give a shit if you're famous. He's like, anybody can be famous. What you need to do is find a way to be important because there'll be no better reward than when you do something important and people remember that. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're gonna do. And, and, and I almost was like, Okay, like Yoda, I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> noted. But but I, I'll be honest, is that I love I love our work, what we do, and how we make a living, and, and, and to make the money at it. And it's fun every time, not a job at all. But I will tell you that when I do something that helps or changes a person's life, I almost get teary eyed and thinking about how a little kid like me from the inner city with nothing grew up and now is helping the same people. You know what I mean? And I, I mean, think that like, that's something that we often forget as photographers, right? Because we're surrounded by top models and celebrities and we pick up the camera, we shoot them and they thank us and we're like, we've done our job. But it's when you take that camera and start pointing at the mundane, that ordinary people doing extraordinary things and celebrating them 
and I have chills thinking about it because I, I can picture your imagery of yeah. the four people standing in front of the hospital and, yeah. and, and it's so powerful. And I think that's something that through this time, we'll be able, we're able to reflect and be able to say, what can our work do, right? Yes. I, 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 you found that it's so powerful because and the fact that the, when I look at those pictures, I can say Sally May, and that's something that's in, already in your blood that you're breathing through. And knowing what she has gone through afterwards, the, the controversial, her, yes. her vision, to her recapture kids. that in your work and, and capture Americana where- This gave me goosebumps. Well, let's admit it. Like, I, I, we're not selling America right now. We're not celebrating the way no. from an artistic world because our fundings and ours are taken away. But in your own way, you're reminding us how important to celebrate a good part of Americana. And and, and I, as a, ooh, I'm choked up. As an yeah, immigrant, I could not, <laughs> I could not appreciate more what you're doing. And it's it is so powerful. And what I love, what I love is this, that you take the A-list celebrities that who you have developed French friendship with, and you put them in the most mundane situation that take them all the glamour, all the lights, all the hair and makeup, all the, oh, you're amazing, you're amazing. And uh, even that paparazzi, oh, I don't see you there, but you, I really do see you there. So I'm going to give you a good sight. You went and captured the most intimate moments with them. And the way they look at you, because they have to look through a window to find you, it is so special. It truly is so special, Brian. It's congratulations. Honestly, Thank you. Congratulations. I, I'm so, so appreciate it. And I didn't really realize how important it was until I got home and, and until I started getting, and by the way, people on Instagram that comment and, and write about it. And, and, and I love, and I do, I do go and read every comment and I read every DM and I, and I may not get back to everyone. Obviously that's impossible, but I, I get so fulfilled with love and, and, and knowing that what I'm doing in this world, especially at this time is making a difference is, probably the biggest honor I'll ever have. I don't know if I'll ever do anything this important and big in my life again, who knows? But Brian, what, I'm, what I love is this, you've done something that a lot of people are not able to do and something I'm learning too. It's actually utilize what you have developed over all this time, 10, 15 years of relationship. You're able to get Reese Witherspoon to give you a moment in time. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this knocking Reese Witherspoon, but she's a very busy woman. She has yes. production, she has kids, and she's one of the most powerful, amazing women. And, and to find time with her and for her to give you that, that's the best, most amazing yeah. reward. Honestly, when I saw the, the imagery that people you were shooting, I was like, oh my God, this is incredible because in our business, you know, go through the public, go through the manager, how long yeah. do you have, who's the hair and makeup? But you took all that away and you made them human. And that's something yeah. I think they absolutely need during this time. I think we all need it. I needed it. I mean, everyone, you know, we're all in the same boat and it's like a million, you know, all of us lost our jobs. Like, thank God that some of them do have the job. I mean, the, like you said, the nurses, the doctors, the, the, the first police, responders, the, the oh. firemen's first responder. It, I mean, what a what a bunch of heroes! What a bunch of heroes! You know, and then Mark, you we've been taking an ass kicking in twenty twenty. But you every result. But you're actually documenting it. You actually giving yeah. a moment in time and capturing it. So tell me about the process of putting a book together because you have a few books already out there. Yeah, and you know the 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 thing about this one that's different is that you know this book is going to be all given to charity. I'm going to donate 100% of the proceeds to um, at Feeding America, which is, you know, they provide a lot of food for uh, inner city and poor, poor people. I was one of those kids. I ate breakfast and lunch um, at school all mm -hmm. year round, even in the summer. And those were usually my, you know, a lot of times the only meals of the day. So when they weren't around, you starved. And it was terrible as, as a child, terrible not knowing like, oh, uh, you know, breakfast wasn't there today, you know. Then all you're thinking about is lunch. And, you know, and as, you know, Americans and humans, there's so much food wasted in this world. And if you go hungry, I, I always correlate it to my friends who are very wealthy. Is it, you ever miss lunch and around three o'clock, you're like, I need to eat something. I'm so hungry right now. I'm going to rip someone's head off. Imagine two days of that. You know what I mean? So 
I wanted to find an organization that's going to, that's already set up and giving back and helping the situation already. So it makes it super easy for me to jump on board with a big organization like that and give them, you know, whatever money that I can, knowing that it's going to go to a good cause. It's getting done the right way and it's trustworthy. As Beautiful. opposed to me starting my own, you know, it, you know, it's, 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 it was just the way and it came to me, you know, I was looking, I think at Leonardo's thing and, and then I came across Eddie Vedder's page and they were like talking about it. And so I looked into it. I'm like, this was me. Like, this is amazing. This is great. And there's no way I was going to go across America and make this book and then keep the money and, and profit off it. Because it would seem like if these people are giving me their souls, if, I, if they're letting me in and making this book possible, which this is a people book. This is the people's book. It's not mine. This isn't a, a, a book about me as a photographer. This is a book about the journey and about America and Americans. And I want it to be their book, which is the other part of this, which is different than every other book I made is that I need, I spent so much money making the book. I just don't have the money to make the actual hard copy of the book. So we started a Kickstarter and um, all the money for the Kickstarter goes, we, we, our goal is what it's gonna cost us to make the book period. Then anything over that goes directly again to the uh, foundation. And just for those of you guys out there, so you can support this book and you can go to Brian's page and really see some of the images. He has a lot of behind the scene footage as well that you can see him in action. And, and, and for those of you guys out there, just so you know, when you see photographer putting out a book, they're paying for it themselves and there's no money to be made in photography book. No. They're just, just celebrating the work. I yet have the gut to put out a book after 15 years. I think this is a year I'm gonna buckle down. And yeah, you, you better. I know, I can't. I'm, I'm gonna call you offline for Absolutely. you to give me a little ass kicking to get my Absolutely. shit together about putting I'd love together. to kick your ass. <laughs> Well, I know you are a gymnast, so I, bet I shouldn't say that. I saw your footage. <laughs> you, what are you talking about? You're in way better shape than me. All you'd have to but, do is run a block. I wouldn't be able to catch you. But truly, for those of you guys out there, this is a time that we all try to find a way to help. And, you know, as, as let's talk in the very beginning of the reason we even had this show was raising money to buy masks for the first responders. Since yes, then, we have that. donated over 100,000 masks to first so responders. Good. It is so crazy. So we all find ways to help, and this is a great way to contribute, and you end up with this beautiful coffee table book with history. And I, 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 I'm so, I, I don't, I don't want to sound wrong, but as a friend, I'm so proud of you because it, I, we see so many people struggling and trying to find their voice through this time, and you are on it and you're in it and you're letting us be in it with you is incredible truly is astonishing that. it's truly astonishing and i wanted to wait until you came all the way back had your moment to kind of breathe before we talk because i was marinating on this moment with you and, and it's, it's incredible inspiring for me as well wow well coming from you that is a huge compliment and i'm humble thank you Oh no. And so, I'm lucky I made it back, first of all. <laughs> when you guys watch some of this behind the scenes, it I was saw that. it You're was crazy. No joke. We did You're... not do this like comfortably. It was it was hardcore and we roughed it and we've had, you know, on long trips like the 18 hour ones, the tr the car fell off the trailer and smashed into the back of the RV. My drive shaft fell off. We broke the steering column. There was it was hard and, and what I will tell you is that even when things went wrong on the road, people were so quick when they found out what we're doing to help us. Three people fixed our truck for free. I it probably that. would have been $1,500 to $2,000. And they're like, listen, I love what you're doing. Take this as a gift, get back on the road. And we're, we were you know, crying and it's like, are you serious? And then it's like, I thought, I thought that going across this country was going to be so sad. And I was gonna see so many people that didn't have jobs and so many people crying, you know, what do we do? I can't pay rent. I thought, that, and people were hopeful. People were happy. They were like happy to see you and just like, I'm so glad you're doing this. And how I did it was I would post on Instagram where I was going and they would dictate where I went, which is why we went over 11,000 miles in, in over six weeks as opposed to two weeks. And we were just going to go to, you know, like Nashville and back. Wow. And I'm like, Wow. One of the most beautiful thing about this book, Brian, that and the cautious or not conscious, but you did it, is full of diversity of people of all color and all ages oh, yeah. and from all different class. 
And, mm -hmm. and I think that is so beautiful, especially now classism is one of the biggest problems that we have in our society. And, and equally important to have Reese Witherspoon and, and, and the people like Hillary Strang to be in the same book as the first responders or that child who just still has a spirit to have hope you know, in yeah. your book and together as one, that's that's what we're all striving for through this Good. difficult time. So thank you for that. No, thank I'm you glad that you I'm that. glad that you noticed it and I'm glad you brought it up because I made a special effort to make that America's a melting pot of all of these beautiful people. And you can see that like Martin Luther, one day I had a dream and that's still been a dream and it's gonna continue to be my dream. And I, I just, pray that in my lifetime I see it. I pray that we see real change. I was happy that when I got back, I raced back actually and cut my trip even shorter because I wanted to make sure that I captured some of the Black Lives Matter movement. And I and I was able to get back and caught the tail end of some of the um, uh, parades and, and, and I got some great uh, graffiti of uh, stuff in Santa Monica and Venice and it was, really important to end the book on that note and, and make that a part of this history. Because this book represents our life at this time. And it's rare that you get the opportunity, like that you have the Vietnam War, you have World War I, you've got things that like, books at that time are, are, are they're educational. There's they're nothing like, manufactured. Yeah, it is yeah. actual life that we're living in. And, and for them too at that time, and and the, I, I what I actually I, what I really truly love about this book and I can't wait to have it in my hand is that it will make you smile, it will yes. make you realize make that you there yes. are lots of beautiful things happening right now and the people are working really hard to protect us are doing it with a smile on their face. The protest comes from the warmth of the heart of the people looking for the better of the future and. and Brian, like you said, this is something that you're doing. I'm, I'm so glad that you're living in the present, that you're able to recognize how important the thing that you're doing now. As a photographer, we're always trying to find ways to give and whether it's showing up to take a photograph to donate to someone or print, but this is action. This is walk to walk and talk to talk. And thank you for being a yeah. champion in our photography world. Thank you for that. I am. And don't forget, if you really want to buy it in my bio, you can click directly on the rink and you, you can pre-order your copy. And there's also a lot of um, really special prints that I'm doing that are limited edition for this project that you can only get on that Kickstarter. So I appreciate the exposure. And, and honestly, coming from someone so established as you, and I know you don't bullshit people, it's, it's, it's an honor to, to be recognized by you and an honor to be on your show. And, and, and I really thank you because just like change, everything needs exposure and people need to know what's going on or you don't. So things like this are, are super important to the mission that you're now deeply a part of and, and everyone that follows you. So I really thank all of you and, and hope that, you know, we all together can make a difference. Well, I can't wait for the time to change that we get to celebrate this book together. In I'm going to hold you so hard. <laughs> I know. I want to get crushed by you. I just yes, know. You are. You're gonna, <laughs> thank you're you, gonna Brian. Like... Thank you, thank you, thank you. And truly, truly Anytime. because of you, I'm going to get to work and put together my book. You're, I'm telling you, you got witnesses now. I'm not letting you off the hook. I'll be, I'll be the first one to buy a copy. And, and, and I do want to thank your team, too. I think incredible crew that often don't get mentioned, your videographer and your assistant and, and yes, people who are truly so your family and your absolutely. agents who sign on as well. And I saw I them. mean, yeah, listen, let's just give them a grace for a second. And my wife who put, oh. put up with leaving and was so scared for me. You know, ages going across the country is a scary thing in these times you never know. We were mm -hmm. sleeping in, you know, gas stations and shady stuff was, you know, still happening. And, you know, and, and my agents, Megan and Rick have, always supported everything that I do. And they're like, look, if you're gone, because I was only going to go to Nashville. And then, you know, Rick was like, dude, you've already like, you're, you could have went to New York and back already. He goes, finish the job, like go do it. So having support behind you, especially, you know, on those long drives and those long days, you know, it got sad. You got lonely. It got, you know, and you know, you were doing a mission, but I tell you, it, it only takes, and this is just an important in life, one phone call or a text for someone to say, look, I love you. And I think that what you're doing is amazing. That goes a long way. 
And I think that every once in a while, I'll just surprise someone I haven't talked to in a year, and I'll be like, hey, I miss you. I love you. Just well, checking we in. love you. We do. We love you. We love the work Good. that you're doing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for contributing to, to the world that we so desperately need for smiles and, and, and documenting this moment that is so, so important. So thank you, Brian, for being with me today. And we'll talk offline with many other discussions. And yes. you're welcome to take over this platform anytime. It's yours to celebrate. Yeah. Talk with Brian. <laughs> thank you I so you. much. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye. So guys, make sure you go to Brian's Instagram, click on his link bio. There's all the information about Kickstarter. Support this beautiful book and what an incredible journey he took us on. And, and if you're listening, you're inspired, make sure you get this book, support the good cause that he's doing. And, and what an awesome opportunity to own a piece of history that he's creating. It's so, so special. I am honored to call him. You know, I'm honored to have him as my friend and, and inspiring me as well. Thank you everyone for joining me here today and I will be back again tomorrow. All right, until we see each other tomorrow, thank you so much again for being here on Let's Talk. Bye-bye.